I got bored so I'm going to make a UDS ugly drum smoker. I bought a brand new barrel for $48 from a company in Kansas City. I could have got a refurbished one from them for 40 but it still had some dents. Or I could have bought a used one for like 12 bucks local here. But I figured I'd buy one, you know, I didn't want no dents in mine. It might not be a not so ugly drum smoker is what I'm going to call it. It did have rust inhibitor, it was all steel, no liner. You don't want to get one with a liner because then you have to really burn it out. But all it had was a light coating of rust inhibitor. I'm burning it out with oak for about an hour. Let it die down. Haven't even decided if I'm even going to paint it because all it did was kind of flatten the paint. It didn't really uh, blister it anywhere, so I, I don't even know if I'm even going to paint it. Here, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the lid so far. What are you doing, Mojo? What I'm going to do is uh, for my my uh, temp gauge, instead of using temp gauge, I'm going to use a uh, old Maverick 735 that I don't use for the last three years. And what I'm going to do is I bought these NMSE cable connector. Shirley Fabrication uses them on their smokers. And I bought a three quarter inch, which will fit the, the small hole on the bung hole on the lid. And it'll screw right in. And I'm going to run my probe wires right through that and put like a little magnetic shelf on the side of the, the, the drum itself and run my probe wires in there. And the probe wires are long enough where it shouldn't interfere with the lid taking it off because there'll be more than enough wire inside the smoker itself. And I just thought it would be a good way to run the wires instead of drilling more holes. Why not just use the existing holes? and should be able to fit two or three probe wires if needed or I can buy a different rubber adapter and make it smaller but that's it for now till more parts come in next week also I want to mention make sure you do burn that rust inhibitor off the inside of the lid and I'm probably going to sand everything down too once it gets done burning out but also, there's a rubber gasket that goes around your lid. Make sure you do peel that out. Or that's going to make a mess inside of your drum. You have all that plastic inside. And I, I just use straight wood and some paper to get it going. But uh, make sure you spin that lid around. Get all that stuff burnt off the top too. And like I said, I'm going to sand it down a little bit and clean it out. And, but thought I'd mention that also. Till a few days when some parts come in. Well, the paint ended up, it did blister. There was a sticker on the side that got real hot with the glue and it blistered the paint. So this morning I decided to sand it down with the sander. It took me about 45 minutes to get it all down to bare metal like this. People told me to use a weed burner, but it didn't work very good at all. And on a 100 degree day, the heat coming off of it, I just wasn't having it. But got it all sanded down, now to get it primed tonight. Like I said, all I used was a little, little tiny sander like this, 45 minutes later. I was down to bare metal. Got it burned out, and now to get this thing painted up and get the holes drilled. Getting ready to prep it for painting. I wanted to go with the clear coat because I thought it looked pretty cool being chrome, but couldn't find no high heat chrome, so I'm just going to go with the semi-gloss. Got my bolts in for my top grate. Did them six inches down from the top. And I'm going to wait to do my second grate. I used an uh, inch and a half bolts to hold the grates, washers and nut. I'm going to get this thing uh, painted now before storms move in. Be back in a bit. Got the UDS done tonight. 
Been working on it for about a week, off and on, in between work. It's got the Hunsaker axle. I think it's like 17 bucks, but it bolts on real easy. You just buy your 8-inch wheels from the hardware store. I got steel ones for the same price as the plastic ones. It's got the bottom vent valve. Start up. Halfway and fully closed. Got my probe insert from my probe wires. Cool touch handles on the top and the front. And I incorporated a bicycle uh, peg. And it's perfect height, didn't have to cut nothing. But with the Hunsaker axle, it uh, perfectly level all the way around. I got the stack from Barbecue Supply Company. Screws in the two inch bun hole. Got some bolts for the stop on the lid so it don't rub up against, you know, when your lid gets all nasty, it ain't up all against your smoker. Built a little U adapter out of a metal. Fabricated that. Hooks on the top. And as you can see, it keeps it off your the bolts keeps it off your side of your smoker. Got a top grate. I did it six inches down. And the second grate. It's six inches down from that grate. So I've got two grates to cook on. Charcoal basket. This is built in ash pan. Put some bolts for legs for airflow from the bottom. And you can see the valve. And you can operate it with your foot real easily. Total wide open, total closed, real easy to install. They give you a diagram and you just basically drill your hole in the center first and then line up where you want your handle to go, Dr tape it on where it goes, drill your holes. It's idiot proof. I kind of think it'll be a better idea on the bottom that way airflow from side to side when the wind's blowing it won't affect it as much coming from the bottom all in all I thought it turned out pretty good this is the first one I've ever built never smoked on one never tasted barbecue off one just waiting for my Shirley fabrication custom build to be made got bored and why not try something like this I'm also uh, since you don't start with a full deal of charcoal when you start it I built a out of a tomato can holds like eight or nine pieces of charcoal drilled holes on the bottom put like a little towel with our little uh, paper towel with uh, vegetable oil on the bottom up to get it started it seems like kind of waste to you know get a big old try to light eight you know charcoals in there as you can on the corner but I think it'd be better to light it in something small like this to get it going and uh, I'm gonna try to get it going right now and uh, see how it see how it operates and this is the charcoal I use best stuff I've ever found except for stubs get it to do it best have it shipped right to the store 40 pound bags but it burns real hot no hardly any ash at all dogs protecting the property as always but uh i'm gonna get this basket fired up do a test run get it seasoned in I'm gonna spray it down the inside with some pam light coat everything and hopefully get to cook on it tomorrow 
but uh, get this thing going, see how it holds temps and how easy it is to come up for the first time. Five minutes later and looks like this little mini char charcoal chute's going to work out great. Just make sure you use pliers or something to grab it with. Dump this in the corner. And we'll see how this does. Fifteen minutes later, after starting it up, shut it down, shut the stack down to about a quarter way, and the run position about halfway, so the hole's about two inch holes about halfway closed. And we're running right at 233. Try not to get too hot. Kind of want to bake the paint in at a lower temp. Not get it real high, but man, this thing came up the temp quick. I see why people use them in comps. Easy start up. Get it going fast. These could be some good hot and fast cookers or. I'm going to try to make mine a little low and slow, but I'm impressed so far. I can't believe I ain't ever built one of these or cooked on one, but I get these temps stabilized where I can keep it at a certain temp. Once it evens out, I'll be one happy camper. Went inside for a little bit, watched the baseball game and a couple hours or so and came back out and it went from 233, 230 something to 249. So I backed it down just a little bit, but it's running right where I want it to. If I can just keep it steady for a whole night cook, that's what I'm looking at. Shut the valve down to a little bit of half under run. But just something I'm going to have to get used to doing. Controlling it a little bit different. It's different than a stick burner. So, but happy so far. Thanks for checking it out.